Hi everybody. So I've been threatening to do this for a while, so here we go. Um, so we're going to compare these two guitars because one of the things that people talk about a lot uh, with Fender guitars is they don't really understand the situation with Fender Mexico. Um, it is quite unique to Fender um, in that they have not only a Far Eastern um, affordable brand, which is the Squire range, and um, various other sort of Far Eastern made Fender branded uh, guitars on occasion. Um, but they also have this sort of midpoint brand, uh, this midpoint sort of thing where, where they've got this the Mexican factory and then they've got the USA stuff. And then above the sort of standard USA stuff, you've got obviously the, the custom shop and all that sort of thing. Um, so, but it, it means that it's quite difficult um, to really put a pin on the differences between a Mexican Fender and a USA Fender in terms of the, you know, there's, there's a big price difference between the two things, but is there a lot of difference between the two guitars in terms of what you're getting for your money? Now, Philip McKnight, uh, a YouTuber I quite like, did a very, very interesting video on this exact uh, issue about five years ago. Uh, it's a little out of date now. In fact, I think he should do a new, it'd be great if he did a new one, which was kind of comparing the current range because uh, the, the ranges have changed uh, quite a bit since he did that video and some of the information in them is not quite accurate now. Um, however, the, the, the video is still excellent in terms of just kind of highlighting really some of the major um, points of interest uh, that really we should you should consider when you're talking about Mexican fenders and USA fenders and comparing the two. Now these two guitars, obviously you can see that they're both thin line Telecasters. Uh, they're both based on the original Series 1 thin lines from uh, 68, 69. Uh, they're very, very similar, both uh, top bound uh, bodies. Um, you know, they both have uh, the sort of that, that original Series 1 look, the scratch plate and everything. Um, there are differences. However, one is a USA model and retailed in 2016 in England um, for about 1500 quid, which is this blue one. Um, and right around the same time, um, maybe a year prior, this one, which is a Mexican made, uh, model uh, retailed in the UK for about 700 quid now that and that was actually more expensive than the standard uh, Telecaster Mexican um, models at the time because this was an FSR uh, factory short run factory special run um, model so it was kind of you know quite unique to that year 2014 2015 um, so in terms of it being the thin line with the candy apple red uh, finish and the top bowing bounding uh, top binding and everything um so what are the differences well there are some differences that add value you know i'd be lying to say you know it's wrong to say these are they're, they're just the same and you know fender usa charges you you know huge money for one of these and you know it's not worth it well it's really it's a tricky one so let's run through a few of the differences uh first of all um, the first thing that most people notice is probably the pickups. Uh, the pickups in the Elite uh, series is uh, are the uh, N4 noiseless uh, tele set. Now, if you wanted to go out and buy a set of these for your guitar right now in, in 2021, um, they're about 130 quid in the UK. Um, if you wanted to go and buy a set of these, which are the Tex-Mex, Fender Tex-Mex uh, pickups, which are the Mexican kind of variants, uh, similar to the um, um, Texas Special type thing, but the Mexican version, uh, Tex-Mex pickup set for the telly, about 70 quid. So, you know, but this is retail. So who, who knows how much they are in terms of the sort of wholesale cost when you actually went to Fender, when they're actually putting the, guitars together but certainly in terms of retail these pickups are you know pretty much twice the price of these ones okay so all right so there's 70 odd pounds difference there um what else 
We've got some fancier electronics here. We've got the S1 switching here uh, and all that sort of thing. We've got a, a newly designed bridge uh, here, the suspension bridge, which I actually don't like very much. Uh, it was a unique to this model and I'm not sure whether they still do it that way, but however, it is a very nicely made machined uh, bridge. It's very, very high quality. You can tell when you sort of pick it up and you look at it. Um, and the bridge here is a sort of traditional standard ashtray type bridge. Um, it does have brass saddles. So it's not the most sort of affordable looking uh, bridge I've ever seen on a telly, but um, but it's nothing special either. So, you know, there we are. And it has standard switching and electronics there three way. Um, all right, so what else have we got? Okay, well, as you can see here, we have this uh, truss rod. This is actually a biflex truss rod. Uh, what that means is that it's actually anchored uh, around about the seventh fret um, and it's uh, underneath the fretboard and it enables you to um, to move the front truss rod in both directions equally, um, whereas uh, the um, traditional truss rod only moves it one way, uh, relief or no relief. Um, so does that add value? Well, I guess, yeah. Uh, it's nice to have the Biflex. Um, the other thing that these have, I mean, at the time, uh, certainly this was the case with almost all Mexican uh, tellies and strats, was you would have this situation with the number of frets in that all the Mexicans had 21 frets. Um, and the USAs would have the extra fret, 22 frets. Um, this was kind of like across the board at this time, and it was it almost felt like a sort of a thing where the Mexican uh, factory, the Mexican uh, models were restricted, you know, in that, like, like they just weren't allowed to have 22 frets because none of them had it. Um, this is not the case now. Uh, I believe there are a fair few Mexican models now that, that also have 22 frets, and that, that differential that difference is not there anymore. But certainly at the time, it was one of the things where when I bought this guitar, um, it was one of the things that, you know, was on my list of niggles about this guitar um, in that I didn't like the 21 frets. 21 frets, I've never liked the 21 fret neck. Now, all the original Fenders were 21 fret, the uh, original tellies and whatnot. Uh, it, I can't, I don't like it. Uh, so it, I never got on with it. And um, being a 24 fret gem guy, uh, typically, uh, I was, I was a bit, you know, not happy on that. And the 22 uh, made more sense, you know, it just, it just was made more sense. And yes, I, 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 I know that this has only got five strings on. Anyway, so what else? Okay, the neck. Well, the neck has a nicer fit and finish. You can, you can feel it's got a nice roll edges. It has polished frets. It has nice fret ends. It's very nicely done. Um, the, uh, the back of the neck is nicely, it has a lovely um, uh, satin finish to it. It's very smooth. Um, it's it's a very very comfortable very nice neck it has a a, a, a compound radius um, design where it flattens out up here curves a little bit more down here um, the neck on the mexi is a little bit more sort of traditional it's shiny and can get sticky in gigs and stuff and you know it's a little bit rounder um, and uh, just a traditional nut and this is a I think, um, I'm actually, I'm not sure whether it's a tusk or anything like that, but so the next thing, I mean, again, does this add value? Yeah, it's sort of, yeah, because these things like the rolled edges, the polished frets, the, the nicely finished fret ends and all the rest of it. I mean, not to say these are bad. They're not, they're very good. In fact, um, in fact, they're, they're, they're excellent. They're not bad at all. There's no sprout. There's no, nothing there that you'd be ashamed of, but this neck is you know, probably more expensive to make than that one. Um, not by much, but you know, whatever. Okay, what else have we got? So we've got we've got locking tuners on here, um, standard Fender tuners on here. Does that add value? Yeah, a little bit. These are probably you know seventy uh, quid retail to buy a set of these. These are more like thirty or forty. There's a bit there. Uh, what else we got? Okay, um, so on the back, we can see that we have this neck joint 
system here, this sort of uh, asymmetric neck joint. We've taken some of the wood away and, um, and on the back of the Mexi, we just have a traditional square uh, thing. Does that add value? Well, not really. It's not something that is necessarily more expensive to do this than to do that. Um, but it's something that's sort of more just ex made exclusive to these kinds of models rather than across the board. This is uh, a conversation for another day in terms of the technology that Fender sort of sometimes imbue their guitars with and sometimes don't. Um, okay, so are there any areas where the Mexican thin line scores over the USA? Well, bizarrely, you'd think there wouldn't be, but there are. There is one particular place. I'll, I'll zoom in and show you. Now, I don't know, because I've never had another one of these. I don't know whether this was perhaps a, an early, I mean, it was an early production of the Elite. They'd just come out when I bought this. But if you look at this, see if the camera can pick it up. If you look at the F hole, look at how kind of rough that looks in terms of its shaping, the cut. It doesn't look very good. And the paint doesn't seem to go down the sides very well. It's difficult to see, actually. I'm going to turn it into the light a little bit, maybe. It's, it's, it's a little bit rough looking, I'll be honest. Look at that edge there. That, it doesn't look, you know, I mean, it looks hand cut and not particularly well. Now, if you go to the same spot on the Mexi, the F hole looks better. And the paint, and maybe, it, maybe it's because the paint is thicker, or I don't know, but it seems, it seems better. And I don't, you know, I, I, I remember thinking that was a really strange thing for this to have in that it feels, it doesn't feel very good. It doesn't feel very high quality, that F hole. It feels, well, I don't know. I mean, on a guitar that when I bought it was, you know, about 14.99 in the UK, but though the, the elites rapidly went up from there. I mean, I think they were more like sort of 16, 17.99 by a, a year or two yet later, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's true. They went up in price um, before they were phased out and replaced by whatever they have got now. So it, it's very strange. That F hole is a very strange thing. Now, the other thing that happened with this particular guitar when I bought it was that when I when it arrived, it, um, it was in a standard USA case. So that's the other thing that we ought to mention uh, before I go on about the case is that these would come in a very nice um, flight case, uh, you know, a hard, a hard case. Um, and the Mexi came in a nice, but not, you know, not stunningly nice, um, deluxe gig, gig bag. Um, supposedly a deluxe gig, gig bag, it was okay, but it was nothing major, major. Um, so gig bag with that one, hard case with this one. But what happened with this particular one was that it came in the wrong case. Uh, it, it, it came in a standard um, sort of USA case. And the elites, when they came out, um, also sort of heralded the introduction of a, of a redesigned case. So this came in this, the case that, that, that had the red handle insert was the existing case and the and the ones with the gray handles with the tsa locks and uh you know the redesigned case which actually i will go over and show you which is just here so this case with the gray handle and the plush gray interior um it wasn't in this case and i i um yeah had to query it with the shop i bought it from and they were puzzled and you know they didn't know what to do. in the end what it as it turned out what happened was the um 
it would seem that they had had a consignment, at least one, my one, but possibly more of the new elites uh, in the wrong cases from the USA. And <clears throat> they strung me along for quite some time saying, well, we can't do anything about it, blah, blah, blah. We're ordering a new, a new case from the States, but they're taking forever to do it. And months went by. I'm not going to say who it was, or the retailer. They were, they were, they were good in the end. They made good, but because it wasn't my fault that it was the wrong case, it was, it was, you know, shouldn't have been. I shouldn't have been the one suffering, but I was, in terms of I had the wrong case with for my money. Um, in the end, I think what they did was they uh, unboxed a, another elite, um, and sent me the case because it was you know, unboxed one that had the right case and just sent me the case, just to, I guess to get me off their, their back basically. And then they would have to have to sort it out with vendor once the new uh, case arrived and sort of swap it all around again. But it was a bit of a, you know, pain in the ass for a couple of months there. Um, and I just think I just got an early, an early one. And maybe the later ones had, they'd sorted this out. And I don't really know why that uh, is so rough and ready looking. Maybe it's to do with the kind of paint they used. They've used it that doesn't cover as well as the, uh, the glossy ass of this uh, finish. I don't know. But the other thing that's uh, interesting to note about uh, these two guitars is the difference in weight. And that this one is one of the lightest thin lines I think I've ever tried. It uh, It's under six pounds. Whereas this one is, a, is about a pound and a bit heavier. About seven pounds. They're both light, but... So what else? Okay, there are a few other things. There's a few bit of ca bit of case candy that was that has a value. Um, you know, you have the the strap locks as standard uh, with this one. They obviously have standard strap pins and lower strap locks with this one. Uh, this one also would have came with a nice leather strap um, in the uh, in the case. So I mean, you know, these are not things that cost that much, um, but it's all extra. It's all on top of the 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 uh, you know. The stuff that you get with one of these but as i said the price um paid for these two guitars um you know was 709 pounds i seem to remember 709 pounds for that one um which at the time was quite a lot more than the standard mexican telly standard mexican telly would have been about 500 and something at the time but this was 700 so it was a bit special but this was about 1500 about 1499 so you know, all the things that I've pointed out about these two guitars, the differences, the things that do add value, you know, it's a better made bridge, it's got more expensive pickups, the Biflex truss rod, the locking tuners, blah, 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 right? All those things, the S1 switching, those things, and the case, uh, those things do not add up, really, uh, to the price difference. But there is one thing that I have yet to mention, or at least I've yet to film, and I'll show you that right now. That this one has that the Mexi doesn't. I want to show you what it is. And what it is is that made in the USA. That's it. That's the difference. And really, what that really means is that, and uh, you know, uh, Phil McKnight pointed this out on, on his excellent video. I do suggest you go and check that out. I'll try and link that um, below. Um, and what he pointed out was it, it really just depends on what you want. You know, um, you know, if, if you want the USA, if you want that thing where you have this sort of connective tissue back to the original, you know, 50s and 60s and, you know, you want that kind of, to feel like this is part of the history of Fender in a way that the Mexican isn't. Now that is an arguable point, but you know, traditionally Fenders were made in USA, you know, and, and it means something or it doesn't that this, you know, guitar was also made in the USA. Um, but this guitar, was half the price of this one. You could have bought two of these for what this cost, just about, you know. Um, and like I said, this is this is how um, Phil McKnight pointed out. He says, what, what do you want? Would you rather have the USA Telecaster or would, would you rather have 
a Mexican telly and a Mexican strap, you know? So really it's not necessarily about which one's better. It's about which one you want. Now for me, um, the choice to go from this guitar, which was, the, you know, the, like I said, the first one I bought, to this one was about some of the advancements that this had. It actually was about some of the things, like I, I mentioned the 22 frets, you know, this was something I was much more comfortable on, being a 24 fret guy. Uh, 21 really messed me up when I was in the upper ranges. I just ran out of frets quite a lot when I was uh, lead breaking or whatever. Uh, you know, this has noiseless pickups, which are handy at high volume stage, high stage volume. Uh, you know, it has that this uh, the, the switching option where if you put it in the center position here uh, and you hit the S1, you get a, uh, a sort of fatter, like a, almost like a humbucking uh, fat sort of um, uh, option there, which is which is, is pretty handy, actually. The only, uh, the only sort of downside to it is that uh, it can be sort of um, not something that you can switch to that quickly in the, in the heat of the moment, so to speak. Now, the other thing worth mentioning, just before, I, in case anyone comments on it, yes, there is a, it's a strap uh, switch tip, but that's only because um, the original uh, top hat type uh, switch tip that it had, which was actually different to, to this one. It wasn't like that. It was a more sort of traditional one. I think, um, but I um, it it came off and uh, I launched it into orbit one day when I was going nuts uh, at a gig and I never found it. So um, I just stuck, you know, I had I just happened to have a blue bluish uh, one in my little uh, uh, toolbox and I just put it on there. I prefer them anyway. Um, it is a beautiful guitar. I do love it. Um, uh, but I have had some niggly problems with it. You know, this neck pickup is intermittent, in fact, not working at all at the moment. I do have to get in there and have a, in fact, I've, I, it's been looked at twice and not diagnosed um, exactly what's going on. Um, we've had this uh, switch replaced um, and it still hasn't cured it. So it's going to be a wiring thing somewhere. But uh, this suspension bridge is, beautifully made but annoying because it's not uh, there's no string through as you noticed on the back there it's completely plain um no ferrules and it, it's string through, strung through the back which is would be fine except for the fact that you have this sort of trench here and uh where it slots in this bridge is not actually fixed to the body it's not screwed down in any way it just slots in under and i've got i've got some film of that but um and, uh, but what it means with this trench here, this kind of thing down here, it means that when you're restringing the uh, guitar, it's really quite difficult to get the string through that hole and up over the saddles because it's kind of buried under this. It, it's, 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 it's frustrating in a way that, a, you know, a classic string through uh, telly is, you know, the opposite is completely super easy. Just shove it through and it's done. Um, said the vicar to the, anyway. Um, so there we are, I think. So what, what am I trying to say? What do, I, what do we conclude from this? You know, is there anything wrong with a made in Mexico Telecaster thin line? No, this is a great guitar. Absolutely great guitar. For 700 quid, it was a great guitar. Um, you know, I mean, I think the, 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 that is a premium, or that was a premium price, like I've mentioned. It, you know, the, the standard tellies, uh, Mexico and tellies, were about 500 and something at the time. Um, but it's a great guitar. It's super light. Uh, I personally had a problem with it uh, pitching down on the headstock down because it was so light in the body. But um, my niece, who owns this guitar now, uh, didn't have that problem with it. Um, so it obviously depends on your body type and you know how maybe how you have it on the strap or whatever. It's a great guitar. Um, you know, it, there's they really. I suppose what conclusion can I come? It's, if you want the USA, get the USA. If you can, you know, if you have the budget for it, then get it. But it doesn't really mean that one's better than the other. There, there, there's things about it that are better uh, for for me. 
but they might not mean anything to anyone else. You know, some people don't like the noiseless pickups, for example. Some people would prefer, you know, a traditional set. Um, so who knows? Um, so there we are. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this one up. It's been long. Sorry about that. But there we are. I think it's um, an interesting uh, point to kind of compare the two and just sort of talk about these this idea that you know Fender got themselves into a bit of a pickle with with introducing the Mexican line because it does sort of you know there's no difference between these guitars in terms of you know fitting parts you, know, you could take this neck off and fit it on there I take that neck off and fit it on here um you know this the pick guard should fit you know there should all be the same you know it's the it's it is very difficult to justify the price difference in any kind of really practical you know um calculatable you know empirical way um ultimately yes this has stuff that adds value you have the case etc etc strap the strap locks etc so you have stuff that adds value compared to this guitar but not perhaps 600 quid value 700 quid value um but again it really comes down to that see you later